Nassau, and then our next port of call was San Juan, Puerto Rico. And it was probably a little over a day sailing there. And so the next day in the morning, just going up on the deck and having a view of the surrounding area, the waters were a little bit choppy, but overall it was a beautiful day getting up to the high 70s and into the low 80s, or 25 degrees Celsius, 27 degrees Celsius. So we did a little bit of uh, time on the top deck uh, before heading down to breakfast and then came back out and did a little bit more sunning, I guess, because we would be going into port later that day. So, not sure if you can see fully here, but as I said, the seas were a little bit choppy, and then we had our pilot boat that would come and take us into port, and you can see that it's encountering a little bit of waves, maybe not some that some people are accustomed to, but for me it was a bit of wave. So the pilot boat pulled up alongside of us and would guide us into port as is standard practice in most areas. After breakfast we came up and were on the deck for a little while just looking at the sights and sounds and doing a little bit of sunbathing and we were planning to head in the shore a little bit later. No rush as there was a good distance yet before we would actually get into port. And as you can see, the pilot boat was guiding us in. And that's standard practice, as I said earlier, in a lot of the harbors, because these men and women know the harbor and know some of the I guess outcroppings or shallows and that, so they would guide us in. This wasn't our first trip to San Juan, but it's still beautiful just with the breeze in your hair and just looking at the surrounding islands and peninsulas. Other boats were in port when we got there. Some just as large or larger than ours, but we were on one of the biggest ships that Caribbean has. And the one you're looking at here, I'm not sure if that's a carnival vessel or a sister ship to the Royal Caribbean fleet. But overall, some impressive ships here on the water. This one is the oasis of the sea, so a sister ship to the one that we're presently on, Harmony of the Seas. These cruise ships have approximately four to 5,000 residents, I guess, as you would call them, because some of them are on for a long period of stay, more than the seven days that myself and Diane are on. The ability and skill of some of these captains, ours included, is fantastic as they were going to maneuver the ship into port and actually we would back in next to the oasis of the sea so that would take a little bit of maneuverability. And one of the things that you can see here, these pools or the pool here, in a recent episode on this particular ship, Harmony of the Sea, one of these pools, if not two of them, emptied out onto the floors below as they had to make a quick maneuver to get away from a abandoned life raft that they found out after. And these pools actually emptied themselves of the water that was in them. So we just heard about that in the news of, since we've got back off our cruise. But overall, it was a great time and just waiting now 
for the captain to get the ship in and docked so we can go ashore to do a little bit of shopping. Not a great deal, but a little bit. One of the ships close to us had this apparatus, I guess. You could call it a crane, but what the people were doing was, I guess, paying money to be able to get up there and take some probably fantastic shots from this eye in the sky, as I would call it. So it almost went 90 degrees, uh, and then it would come back down, and then people would unload, and then another group would go up. But this was happening while the ship was in port. Not sure if that would be happening while it was at sea. But here's another one of the pools that ended up emptying its water in the recent episode that they had while traveling to San Juan as well. Here you see some of the activities that uh, from the other ships. Here are some uh, craft that you rent and you can go on a tour. And I think when I counted them, there was about 15 of them. As you can see now, we're ashore and the ships that are in port are just massive with about 5,000 people on each one. So we just did a little bit of shopping on Main Street here, right close to the boat that all we had to do was get off and we walked over and would walk back and spent a bit of money with buying some souvenirs and those kind of things to bring back home. As you can see, lots of people here as well. And again, another just look at the ships as they are here in port. For a short period of time, usually the stays are about six to seven hours. Sometimes they get up to around 10 hours, but for the most part, the stay is about eight hours. Here, the Mardi Gras, the largest ship in the Carnival fleet. And then back as I'm waiting for my wife to walk through some of these vendors here to my left. You can see my wife here picking up some last minute items from one of the vendors that she had seen earlier. And then a couple of last shots before we head back to our ship and sit down and have a tea before we get ready to go out for our evening meal. Overall, a short excursion, about two hours, but beautiful.